A fun ride. Draw in a subject that explodes with super shiny highlights, reflection, and color. In this video, we're going to draw a cherry and get into three cool skills to help you get better at drawing super shiny subjects with a little bonus tip at the end of the video. So welcome Cherry and everyone and thanks for joining me. Now let's get drawing. To start, the materials I'm working with are Polychromos pencils from Faber-Castell, Prismacolor Colorless Blender and White Pencil, Caran d'Ache Colorless Blending Pencil, Gamsol Solvent, M&R Mobius and Rupert pencil sharpener on Stonehenge paper. The colorless, which is small, is in the description section below. Okay, drawing super shiny subjects with colored pencils. Have you ever asked yourself what makes super shiny subjects so unique? They have a very distinct look and feel, sometimes plasticky, glassy, glossy, with lots of reflection. They're very defined lines showing highlights and areas of reflection, often showing objects in the background or things close to the subject. There are distinct colors and color transition areas, and they're very specific, needing to be drawn as close to the original as possible or the illusion of the subject's form will get lost. What I've discovered is that there are three key areas of drawing that can really boost your super shiny drawing skills. One, super crisp lines and edges. Two, correct color lay down. And three, blending, blending, and more blending. So let's jump into skill one super crisp lines and edges. Before I started drawing, I paid close attention to what I need to draw and how I need to do it. Subjects that are shiny will often have super sharp lines where the reflection is along the outside contour edges and transition areas between one color reflection and another. Like this cherry, the reflection areas are clearly defined. To attain the illusion of realism and fun in these reflections, I need to make sure that the areas are crisp and clean with a thin crisp line as the starting point. That's what you see me doing here. Creating those lines with colored pencils can be really hard and sometimes frustrating because colored pencils are not the best tool for holding a point. But there are some great techniques I've learned that can fix this. To do this, I make sure my pencils are always super sharp. You can see as I draw these areas, the line is not fuzzy or messy. It's precise and clean. I'm starting those lines with a dark red in the darkest areas of the cherry. Colored pencils have a tendency to lose their point easily. Some brands are softer than others. For me, the Polychromos is a great middle of the road pencil. It has a medium hard lead and will hold its point relatively well. But more importantly, it's simply the nature of the medium and what makes them so great for layering and blending with each brand bringing a hard and softness to the drawing process, we have a lot more choices to choose from. These wonderful tendencies, however, are not always great for those sharp lines and needed on subjects that have a lot of super shiny areas. Then the key is finding a good medium to hard pencil brand like the polychromos and then sharpening your pencil often and not allowing the pencil to go dull on the point. To get me there, I love to use a handheld sharpener and one of my favorites is m &R, Mobius and Rupert handheld sharpeners. Why a handheld sharpener? For me, sharpening is time and control over the sharpening process. Handheld sharpeners allow me to sharpen to the point I want and it only takes seconds. When creating work that requires super sharp lines, you need to really have access to an excellent very sharp sharpener. Sharpener. I've tried many, many sharpeners, even battery and electric ones, and keep coming back to handheld sharpeners. There's a lot on the market and m and is just one great brand. I think it's important for you to use what works best for you. After sharpening and getting the point, another key is paying attention to the pencil point. It just feels different when they become dull and rounded. Also, try turning your pencil in your hand as you draw. This is a technique used to keep the lead sharp all the way around for a longer period of time. As you use your sharpener, take note of any time your pencils are pulling or are hard to turn. This usually indicates that it's time to change the blade on the sharpener. Good quality handheld sharpeners have replacement blades. Now that's a bonus since you don't have to throw out that sharpener if the blade gives up. Always keep the pencil sharpened all the time. I usually sharpen my pencils every 20 to 30 seconds, sometimes even more, sometimes less depending on what I'm doing. And every five days or so, I change the blade on my sharpener. Keep doing this, keep paying attention to how your pencil is performing and you're guaranteed super sharp lines on your drawing all the time. Skill one is all about crisp edges and lines to help convey the illusion of shiny areas. When you observe a real cherry, you'll notice the defined edges that give it that realistic and appealing look. Super shiny subjects need very clear defined areas between light and dark and keeping those areas 
areas crisp and clean and making sure it stays that way as you work on your drawing is essential so always keep your pencils super sharp. Aiming to replicate this on the drawing is a major drawing element that will really make your drawing pop. Let's jump into skill two and color lay down. The shapes of the highlights and the colors that you're using, or more specifically, the way the colors sit in a reflection area and transition out to full color, are very specific in super shiny subjects. As you transition between the surface of the cherry or the dark fleshy areas of deep beautiful reds to the area of the reflection, the laydown becomes more defined. We use lots of layering for the areas of the cherry surface flesh, but as we transition to the reflection areas, the color laydown is drastically reduced. Laydown or layering becomes almost non-existent for these areas as the color transitions to white. For our example, cherries are known for their vibrant red hue and we want to bring that intensity to life on our paper. But as the intense color transitions to a reflection area, that color must dissipate. That dissipation is what creates the illusion of a super shiny subject. Choosing colors for our subjects is always a key part of discussion in drawing. But it's not just choosing colors that are important. It's how the color is applied that also makes a difference. The key is to make sure you have skill one completed, defining your reflection areas. I then like to clearly define the main areas of the color outside the reflection or highlight areas. To help you choose your colors, you can use a color selector app or do a comparison chart with some swatches. Once you have your colors and areas of reflection defined, I work at building the colors of the main body up in layers. I'm always mindful of the pressure of the pencil, keeping it light at first and using this light touch as a means to transition into the reflection areas. Light touch, light transitions, and then whisper the color on at the end of the transition area in the reflection sections. When drawing with colored pencils, a big majority of the time means we work on paper. Paper has tooth to it, and this tooth is what causes the drawing to look mottled and appears lighter than it could be or what the subject appears to be. Using blending methods is not a revelation, I'm sure, for many of you, but the degree of blending needed for super shiny subjects jumps substantially. This is the final key to successful drawing of these subjects. When drawing super shiny subjects, we want to eliminate that paper tooth. The idea is to make the subject look as solid as possible with just color. I often teach to using the paper as a means to create texture and lights and darks. It isn't too often that I use deep blending methods on my subjects because texture tooth and lightness creates a very distinct feel and beauty within colored pencil work. However, this is not the case when doing these types of subjects. We want to eliminate the paper tooth for most of the subject. Most is key here. Looking at the drawing of the cherry, the deep dark areas or areas that don't transition to white are where we apply our heaviest blending methods. However, as we draw to the light, we do not want to use deep blending. So what do I mean by deep blending? I would define it as a mix of pencil and solvent blends. There are several levels to blending. The first one is by using a blending pencil. Blending pencils are pigment-free pencils. Each professional brand of colored pencil makes their own blending pencil. While each brand has a different blending product, each of these products are not the same. This is fantastic for us colored pencil artists because then we have greater choice to help us with our work and each one brings a unique opportunity to our drawing. I'm using a Prismacolor colorless blender and a Caran d'Ache colorless blender pencil also. During the initial drying stage, when you only have two colors down on the paper, it's not worth using a blending pencil. As we lay down color, it's done with very little pressure and blending one or two colors doesn't really make sense. There are key factors to take note of with blending pencils. When you use a blending pencil, it has a tendency to flatten the paper fiber more and more each time it's used. Colored pencils does this also, so combining color laid down with lots of blending pencil will flatten the fibers more and more. To avoid this, go lightly with your colorless blenders at first. Apply it only after two or more layers and as you progress with more colors, you can do more blending and press a bit harder each time. Like all things art related, It'll take time to get used to what stages work best. But as you can see in this drawing, I'm clearly using colorless blenders further on in the drawing stage. And I keep adding more color and keep blending, pressing lightly and slowly working the colors into the paper. Blending is crucial to create that beautiful transition of shades and glossy look of the cherry. The second and more challenging type of blending is done with a liquid solvent or solvent pen. Solvents break down the binder in the colored pencil and semi-liquefy the colors. This effect is what you're after in the super shiny subjects. But be careful. Once solvent is used, the pencil color and binder sink into the paper and become permanent. The surface becomes wet and slick until it dries and there is no way to erase a solvent blended color once it's down. 
So when I use a liquid solvent, I always suggest using it at the final stage of the drying, when 90% or more of the drying is complete. Then using a small brush, gently apply the solvent. Pick up a small amount, not directly from the solvent container, but from a secondary container. And if you need to, slightly dab it on a paper towel. The solvent will get absorbed quickly into the drying and you'll have to keep loading your brush. Keep this up, working slow, and keep the areas of colors clean. When to not use the solvent are in the transition areas. Keep those area highlights for just the color and possibly the pencil blender only. Once you've applied a layer of liquid solvent, you can use a white pencil on the dark areas for highlights, as I did in this drawing. White, such as Prismacolor White, adheres well to solvent worked areas and the white really stands out. Keep using your blending solvent on the areas of the subject that are super shiny and stay away from areas that transition out to the tooth of the paper or are dull like the leaf. And finally, to top it all off, a bonus tip. When drawing subjects that have a very clean line between one area and another, I'll often use a hard 2H super super sharp drafting pencil to do clean edges. Be careful and do not press too hard so it doesn't cut into the paper or go too dark. The key is to getting it to work successfully is to do it light enough, fade it out a bit onto the edge and you'll have success. I teach to this in all my advanced classes. So there you have it. In conclusion, a beautiful cherry super shiny subject done. Remember, be kind to yourself and be okay if it doesn't work out the first time. Keep working on your skills, keep drawing, and keep having fun. So thanks for joining me. Consider subscribing to my channel or signing up for my newsletter, which I send out every month. The link is in the description box below. Cheers.